We should replace vague ideas with clear images, says the text on screen at the beginning of the film. Indicating that we as the audience are going to view a clear and logical movie. However, this is totally the opposite of what La Chinoise actually is. It's an utterly vague film, including sporadic shots, sudden loud sounds and confusing dialogue. Just take a look at this for example. La première sortie en amoureux de Juliette et Pierre leur ouvrit les, les portes d'un monde magique, nous Le monde des mots que personne n'avait prononcé avant eux. Qu'est-ce que tu dis encore Qu'est-ce que c'est que ce journal des Mais... Mao, Mao. Watching the 1967 film now, it has a sort of Kubrick-esque feel to it, mostly reminding you of a Clockwork Orange and a Space Odyssey, with its unusual pastel colored backgrounds. The film's overarching theme is politics, but how does it explore this topic? At its core, La Chinoise is about a group of Maoist students who are holed up for the summer at a wealthy friend's house, studying ideas of various communist historical figures. Throughout the film, some key characters have multiple monologues. Le Vietnam brûlait, moi je hurle Mao Mao. Johnson rigolait, moi je vole Mao Mao. Le Napalm coulait, moi je roule Mao Mao. Les villes crèvent, moi je rêve Mao Mao. Les putains criaient, moi je ris Mao Mao. Le riz est fou et moi je joue Mao. Even if you watch the film with this information in mind beforehand, it's still as confusing as can be. What does the dialogue mean? Why is this shot shown at this moment in the film? And why is it even in the film in the first place? Trying to find the permitting message of the picture can be really challenging as a viewer. Godard's appreciation and use of German playwright Bertolt Brecht's work caused his films to become more engaging. Brecht's use of epic political theatre forced the audience to interact instead of just consuming the material presented. This is also seen in La Chinoise, with the characters speaking directly to the viewer in their individual monologues, forcing us to engage. We are also forced to interact with the film's ideas by having to make sense of everything shown on screen, and the order in which they are. In one particular scene, Godard decides to turn the camera to the viewer, interrupting the natural flow of the scene. It makes us feel as we're being filmed and questioned too, not only the characters. Besides drawing inspiration from Brecht's method of political theatre, Godard also got his ideas from Maoism. Godard even goes as far as to point out the inherent contradictory nature of the Maoist students. For example, Veronique holds a Peking information book, while showing multiple fashion magazines in the background of the shot. The director doesn't shy away from pointing out hypocrisies in being so-called Maoist or Marxist-Leninist, but also still adhering to capitalist values. And so, along with Brechtian aesthetics, he realized the aforementioned Maoist ideas in his film. A scene where his critique of the students' Maoist practices is clearly shown is when Omar, one of the students, is reading the other's text from Mao's Little Red Book and asking them questions. Before Yvonne became a part of the group of students, she was just an ordinary working girl from the provinces. During the whole film, she's mostly seen doing household chores like doing the dishes or just cleaning in general. She also seems not to have as a good of a bond with the rest of the group of students as the others. This scene only accentuates the metaphorical distance. She is essentially divided from the rest of the group and overlooked. Besides strong political rhetoric, the film also presents us with various comedic scenes, using Brecht's storytelling technique of spas. By using this method, Godard attempts to make the audience try to understand the ideas of themselves. La Chinoise is very loosely based on Dostoevsky's novel, Demons, or as some people call it, The Possessed which is also about a group of radicals, but these radicals want to overthrow the Russian government using political violence. The book includes Dostoevsky suggesting that the revolution will ultimately fail, as opposed to Dostoevsky's more conservative view of the revolutionaries. Godard was actually a Marxist himself, so he instead chose to portray the students as serious, but at the same time childish in their approach to use violence to start a revolution. Godard used cinema as a sort of vehicle for Marxist politics, more than just an art form, but a way to send a message of revolutionary action. Three years after the release of La Chinoise, the Maoist publication, and correct me if I'm wrong in pronouncing this, La Cause du Peuple, that Godard was part of, was banned by the French government. La liberté n'a pas toujours les mains propres. Véronique, ça ne va pas Tu as des ennuis Oh, j'ai trop d'ennemis. D'ennemis Toi Lesquels 
Oh, tu sais, les seigneurs de la guerre, les bureaucrates, les compradors, puis les propriétaires, puis aussi la fraction des intellectuels réactionnaires qui en dépendent. Enfin, voilà mes ennemis. The climax of the film is the train scene towards the end, when Veronique takes the train to the hotel where the French Minister of Culture is staying. She's planning to murder him. But before arriving, Veronique has a deep philosophical conversation with the political philosopher Francis Jensen. He serves as a kind of father figure to Veronique. Even though he tries to argue against the use of political violence, Veronique remains unconvinced and decides to pursue the murder. When Veronique arrives at the hotel, sadly for the students, Veronique assassinates an innocent bystander inside of the minister by accident since she has mixed up the hotel room numbers, causing Kirillov to commit suicide at the end of the film. The film concludes with the Maoist students leaving the group, having failed to spread their ideology. As Veronique says, and I quote, A struggle for me and some comrades. On the other hand, I was wrong. I thought I'd made a leap forward. Thank you so much for watching this video on one of Godard's most underrated films. If you have enjoyed this video, consider liking this video and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.